CSP, or CubeSafe Parity, is a method in Square 1 where you never get parity by eliminating any parity errors while doing cube shape. This method has been one of the biggest jumps in terms of methods for square one. In this video, you'll learn how to track if there is parity or not in inspection. There are 90 cube shape cases, not including mirrors, but they are all tracked the same. The way this works is by counting the number of parities the puzzle has by looking for specific parts of the cube. If the number is odd, then there is parity. If the number is even, then there is no parity. The six things you'll need to look for is parity in the white and yellow edges, in the white and yellow corners, and all position edges and corners. This may sound complicated, but this will all be cleared up in this video. Keep in mind that this method is not easy to understand, but is very beneficial at the end. I recommend this method only if you want to be world class at square 1, and if you're ready, sub 15. However, if you're really determined to get good at square one, feel free to start learning this whenever you want. First, you need to know the order for tracing corners and edges. I like to start on the top layer from the bottom left and go clockwise around the top layer. Then I start the bottom layer from the top right and go clockwise around that layer. Here's what the order looks like in a different cube shape. Where you start is also important. In the reference schemes, you will always start at a certain piece. For example, in this case, it's this piece. Whenever you get a scramble where the layer is misaligned, you would start at that same piece. For example, the top layer is misaligned in this one. We're not going to start here, but rather, we're going to start from a piece that we started in the reference scheme. First, let's do the white edges. We'll use the most basic cube shape case. Remember, we start from the bottom left and we go clockwise around the top layer. So we're gonna run into this white edge as red. So we're gonna keep note of red. The next one is green, so it's red, green. The last one is orange. So we've got a pattern of red, green, orange, which is our pattern of three white edges. The idea is to reduce the three colors into a more manageable two colors, more specifically two non-opposite colors. By now, I would assume that you would know your opposite colors. To do this, we need to identify where the two opposite colors are of the three and eliminate one of them. These opposite colors can be the first two, the last two, or the first and last. Whenever they are the first two, eliminate the middle one and keep the first and last ones. Whenever they are the last two, eliminate the last one and keep the middle and first ones. Whenever they are the first and last, eliminate the first one and keep the last and middle ones. The last thing to memorize is which two colors are parity. All you need to know is that blue and orange means parity and green and red means parity. Any combination of two colors other than these would mean no parity. Doing this for edges is easy, but for corners it's a bit more difficult. Since corners have two colors, you have to pick one. I always take the one to the right. It'll be green here, and it'll be red here. On the bottom layer, it's a bit more tricky, so I flip it over, and that's the right one, orange. And on and on, it'll be blue, red, uh, blue here, and then orange. So it's everyone on the right as if it was facing you. Next is odd position edges and corners. We'll do edges first. We'll number them 1 through 8 using our order from before, and we get odd and even numbers. We're going to eliminate all the even numbers, leaving all the odd numbers. Using these numbers, these are the positions that we're going to look at. So we're going to count the number of white edges in this position. If the number of white pieces is odd, then we have parity. If it's even, we have no parity. Pretty simple. Another way to think about this is to skip every other edge. So for here, it'll be the first one, skip the second one, third one, skip the fourth one, fifth one, skip the sixth one, and on. So it's doing every other edge. So those are the four key edges. Again, the same with corners. So that's the first one, skip the second one, third, skip the fourth one, fifth, skip 
this one, and then we got the last seventh one. So those are the four edges that you're gonna use. All right, let's do an example. So you'll notice that it is misaligned. That's fine. So we're gonna start from here, go that way, and here this way. All right. So let's start with the edges. So we go with the white edges first. We got white and orange. Um, then we go here. It's white and green. So orange, green, and the last one is white and red. Orange, green, red. So remember when we have the opposites in the first and the last, we're gonna eliminate the first one. So we're gonna have green and red, which is parity. So one parity. Moving on to yellow edges, red, green, and orange. So again, it's the first and last one. They are opposite. So we're gonna eliminate the first one. So we're left with green and orange. So green and orange, it's not parity. It's not one of the parity sequences. So we're gonna stay at one parity. Moving on to corners. Remember, it will start here, not here. So let's do the white ones first. Go around, white one right here. So it's blue. Remember, it's on the right side. Blue, um, nothing here. I want to keep going. So blue, red. One more, orange. So the last two are opposite, red and orange. So we're gonna eliminate the last one. We're left with blue and red, which is not parity. So, so it won't parity. Moving on to the yellow corners. Uh, we're, we have blue here, remember it's on the right side, and then we're gonna do this, nothing here, here, it's red, so it's blue, red, and then the last one is orange, which is right here, last two are opposite, again, eliminate the last one, it's blue and red, blue and red is no parity, still at one parity. Now all position, edges and corners, so... We're going to do the top layer with the edges first. Alright, so we're going to do this one, skip this one, this one, skip this one, this one, skip this one, and then this one. So we've got these four. As you can see, there's only two edges of these four, which means that we have no parity, which is nice. So, these four. And there's only two white, which is good. So, so at one parity, we're going to do the corners. We'll start here, go around here, so here, skip this one, here, skip this one, here, skip this one, and here. So we've got these four pieces. So we've got yellow, yellow, white, yellow. So we have one white piece. This means that we do have parity. And here's a little cool trick. Instead of going to two, you can just go to zero. The reason why this works is because it's even odd, not the number of parities. So you can count one zero and then go binary, which is completely fine. This is helpful because if you go to really high numbers, it's gonna get confusing. So I just like to do one zero one zero. Okay, so we're at zero now, which means that there is no parity. So I'm gonna do a no parity out. Let's see if it works. As you can see. No parity. Which is nice. So there you go. Alright, from here, the only thing left to do, now that you know how to recognize if there's parity or not, is to learn all the algs. Because every time you get parity or non parity, you have to do a specific alg for that case. So that way you can always avoid parity. So, all the algs will be in the description. It's in a Google Sheets thing. Uh. Unfortunately, the method is different for that one, so you're gonna get cases where the even odd cycles or odd parity and even parity, they're all mixed up. So, if you wanna do this yourself, what you have to do is for each case, do the setup alg, which is one of the columns, and track if there's parity or not. If there is parity, then you have to switch the even and odd cycles columns. So the odd parity becomes even parity, even becomes odd. Um, if it's fine and there's no parity, 
then they stay the same as the other method. So you can do that yourself. Or I'm working on a um a girl slides thing for this. So once I finish it I will put it in the description. So if that is out, you can check that in the description and that should be good. The solves are wrapping up and so is this video. I'm um, sorry it's a bit long, I just try to explain everything thoroughly. If you have any questions, which is probably normal because this is pretty confusing, uh, please do leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer as much as I can. Uh, thanks for watching and good luck.